Hey guys! Today is Friday, June 26th, and welcome to episode 33 of Knits and Stuff. My name is Alicia, and today we'll be talking about works in progress, pretty things, local delights, and wibbly wobbly timey wimey. Um, first, welcome to those of you that are new, and for those of you that are returning, thanks for coming back. Um, if you haven't already, there's a group in Ravelry that you can join. It's called the Knits and Stuff Podcast. And I'll put a link to that in the show notes along with everything else I talk about, which are at knitsandstuff.wordpress.com. So yeah, let's get started. Um, so works in progress, let's do that first before I jump into all of the other stuff I have to talk about. Um, I am working on, I made a little bit of progress on the Henslow Shawl by Beth King. And that's this. Um, I believe I was just starting some of the lace repeats the last time I talked to you guys. Um, so that's about how, as far as I've gotten. Um, and this is out of Malabrigo Machida in the colorway Pearl. Um, it's on US 4's 3.5 millimeters um, by Addy Natura Clicks. Um, and this is going to be for Miriam, um, it's almost done, and she picked out the yarn and the pattern, um, and so far I really like it, um, the lace pattern is really simple, it's not, um, that, it's not easy to mess up, so that's good, <laughs> um, and, uh, I guess it's easy to memorize in a sense that, um, when you're going across a row you don't have to keep looking at the pattern but I do have to double check for each row what I'm supposed to do next um, but it has a nice result in in that lace so it looks looks good for not much work <laughs> um, and so I think I have um, about half of a lace repeat left for this section and then I get on to the border section and then I'll be done um, last time I talked about this there were some modifications that I made um, which include picking up stitches with a larger needle, um, slipping the first stitch on the edge to make a neater row, and oops, that was my phone. I should turn that on silent. <laughs> and um, yeah, I think that's um, mostly it. Oh, and doing a double yarn over um, on the edge of the first section too. But that will be detailed on my Ravelry page eventually when I actually put the notes in there. <laughs> So yeah, that is, um, that's the shawl, and I have to get used to my camera again because I just made it worse, because it's been a while since I recorded, and I haven't done this in, in a few weeks, um, but more on that later. Uh, so I have started two new projects, which you guys haven't seen yet, although you've kind of seen, wait. Uh, you might, I might have shown the Quaker yarn stretcher last time. I think I actually had already started it. So, um, this is, oh, goodness. Um, oh, and this is the, uh, Henslow shawl is in a bag that I have sewn and still haven't finished yet. Um, out of some fabric from Pearl Soho. Um, it's going to be a drawstring bag one day. <laughs> and then the, um, Quaker yarn stretchers in my Ravelry um, anniversary bag or birthday bag. So, so um, anyway, I made quite a bit of progress on this. I didn't put a marker in where I had last shown it to you guys, but um, this is the Quaker yarn stretcher boomerang by Susan Ashcroft. It's on US 7's 4.5 millimeters. Um, I'm using Crystal Palace bamboo needles and the yarn is free of fine hand paints in the colorway South Beach. So that is what it looks like. It's coming along. Um, I am using two skeins of the, um, the free yarn. Um, I've already finished the first skein at this point right here, <laughs> and then I'm going back in reverse um, on the second skein, and it has an ombre um, color colorway, so 
you can do this. <laughs> so it goes from um, gray to mint, a mint color. It would help if I point on this side um, to a mint color to the, that orange that you see, and then um, and then um, when I started, it went back to that other colors. So. Because that makes sense. So basically, it's going to be gray on either end. And um, and then uh, in the middle, it'll be that orange color and then come out to the mint, minty color. Um, so I made some modifications on this that I kind of copied um, from another Ravelry user. Uh, and she also used the same yarn in the same colorway. And um, but I liked, the, I really liked the way hers looked. Uh, so what she did was um, she broke up the uh, stitch pattern so that there was it was a little more um, random in a way, kind of. Um, so instead of being consistently um, consistent garter ridges, um, there would be spaces of stockinette throughout. Um, so there's a set of three garter ridges, then some stockinette, a set of five garter ridges, and then some stockinette. So that um, will also be detailed in my um, pattern notes when I put that up. So yeah, that is that. This is a lot of what I knit um, during our train rides in the UK. So this and my other project. Um, so that's why there's so much of this done and it's a it's an easy pattern um i finally oh i did talk about this last time because i said that i hadn't memorized it yet um because i had just come from knitting the hitchhiker and that pattern um is similar construction to this one but it has a different increase um technique and I was mixing them up, so I had to, I had to keep looking back to this pattern, but now I finally have it memorized. Um, so it's pr really easy to pick up and just knit on. So I've been doing that a lot on the side um, when I get a chance. And so is the other project I'm working on, which is a sock head hat. And this used to be a Bristol hat, but this yarn that I was using... Um, the colorway just didn't work out for the Bristol pattern, so um, so I ended up frogging it and doing simple stockinette instead for um, the sock head hat. So I knit, I think I'm almost done, this is why I stopped. I would have finished this <laughs> um, um, while I was in the UK, but I wanted to compare it with the sock head hat that I already have. Um, to see if this was the right length and I didn't have a chance to do that yet so it should be done soon though. Um, so this is the Sock Head Hat by Kelly McClure. Um, it is out of Malintosh Merino Light in the colorway Neon Lot A which I think was a test color um, when I picked it up. And yeah I still have a good amount of yarn left. Um, Oh, and these are on size US 3. Um, I didn't write down the... They're 3... 3.25 millimeters for US 3s. Um, <laughs> and uh, yes, yeah, so this is how much yarn I have left. And um, these are on Crystal Palace bamboo needles as well. Um, and I actually... They're supposed to be... Funny story, um, they were supposed to be on um, 3.0 millimeter needles and I heard you knit a sock head hat so I thought I had already had um, 3.0 millimeter needles but all I could find were the US 3s and I think what I did was um, actually knit the my first sock head hat out of US 3s and thinking that they were 3.0 Oh, millimeter needles because they just say three on the needle but there's no unit on them um so yeah um I guess I didn't actually knit that first one out of uh 3.0 millimeter needles even though my Ravelry page says it said it said I did and I spent like a good hour or so looking for those needles too all I found were these <laughs> so but it seems fine um yeah, it's not too loose or anything, so the gauge is okay. Um, 
But yeah, that's all of my knitting. Um, and the rest of the show is probably going to be talking about my whole trip <laughs> to the UK. Um, I have quite a lot of pretty things to show and I guess the local delights will kind of be combined um, with that. Um, and then I do have that. I did mention that I'd be talking about Doctor Who, so that'll be towards the end and also part local delights too. But yeah, we have a lot to talk about. So let me show you all the pretty things that I bought. So um, we started out in Scotland and we spent the first couple days making our way out west um, into the Highlands. And we went to Inverness. We went on a tour of uh, Loch Ness and looked for Nessie. Um, we went to cast some castle ruins on that tour as well. Um, and then we went down to a farm um, called the Lealt Working Sheepdog Farm. And um, they did a little demonstration. They do one um, every day during the summer at 4 p.m. Um, it's open to visitors and um, they show, the guy shows off his, his uh, border collies herding all of his sheep and he even um, sheared a sheep which was really cool <laughs> to see with the old fashioned shears, not any um, electric shears or anything. Um, and then we got to feed some sheep um, with milk or feed some lambs. And if you follow my Instagram, um, I did, I think I posted a picture of the lambs. And we even got to hold a puppy because he had this like bucket of puppies that he brought out at the end. And was like, um, does anyone want to hold the puppy? And everyone was like, well, yeah. <laughs> um, so we got to hold puppies and it was really fun. It was about an hour long um, demonstration and they had um, a book for sale just kind of like as a, a donation um, or in support of the Leal farm um, so that is what the book is um, and then they have these ugh, adorable if you're ever in Scotland it's it's a really fun thing to see um, I, I need to look in to see if any farms um, in the US do this because it's um, it's I don't know, it's a good experience to go see like an actual demonstration. The guy is, the shepherd's talking about, you know, what his running his farm is like. And this guy had um, 12 acres of land that his sheep would roam. And he um, had like thousands of sheep and, um, and like 10, I think there were about 10 sheep dogs. Um, that he had and he was training some while he was demonstrating and it was just it was really interesting to, to watch and to hear about all of the um, all of the the sheep herding farm farming industry I guess in Scotland so and there were there were a ton of sheep in Scotland oh my gosh everywhere you go there are sheep <laughs> so that was really exciting um, but yeah this is the the book it's probably more geared towards kids um <laughs> but i i wanted to get a copy of it see and they basically go through like see we got to feed the sheep <laughs> but yeah it was really cute and um the dog the dogs are really funny too um and they were so but they were so good at listening to his commands so it was really good um so it's semi yarn related <laughs> or fiber related it's totally fiber related but um this is not fiber related so um there are um a breed of cows uh or yeah i guess you would call it that um called highland cows in scotland and um we really wanted a like memory of the highland cows even though we hardly got to see any of them but you always see them in pictures when um when you see like the Scotland Highlands, there's always like the Highland cow and the hills and yeah. Anyway, so we got this adorable hat um, after the Loch Ness tour. Um, they were selling, they had a gift shop and this this cute hat um, of a Highland cow with his little nose. Anyway, so that, <laughs> side note, um, but I would count that as a pretty thing, right? <laughs> so um, from there, we, went to the Isle of Skye, um, which is where the Quai Rang, 
have no idea if I'm pronouncing that right, is. Um, it's basically a bunch of rock formations and, and this huge um, park slash farmland area. And you can go hiking through um, through the hills. And there was actually, um, so the reason that I wanted to go here was because one of my um, my work computer, my desktop background is of a picture in the choir ring. And I was like, I have to find this place because we're going out here. So we went out there, we went on a hike. Um, and then it was really, really pretty. Um, I'll have to post some pictures or link to some pictures um, of, of that but it was a really fun hike it was only like two and a half miles roughly um and there were more sheep there <laughs> um, and some waterfalls that we had to cross it's not an easy hike um but because the trail was kind of it, it rains there a lot and it was really windy um but it was it's a fun hike if you have you know good hiking stamina it's it's um it's a good one. He had to cross some waterfalls, so that's, I guess, what was the hardest part was. <laughs> but, um, so after the hike, we went, um, kind of around the Isle of Skye. Um, we went to a town called, um, Uig, <laughs> which is U-I-G. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right either, <laughs> but there was a pottery studio there and there were actually um, a bunch of different galleries and art studios across the Isle of Sky. I guess it's um, there are a lot of artists in that area and um, so and they have a little booklet um, that has basically a directory of all of all of the places you can go and this place um, was well there were a couple places that I went to here and now I have to find it I should have marked this earlier <laughs> um 27 okay so there this place was um the we pottery studio and there were a bunch of nice um nice uh pot pottery that was there and there were little highland cows. We got we got one of these um, <laughs> as well. But I also got this little container um, that was handmade and it has the pottery, the weak sky and, the, and a little salt scoop. But um, from there we went to some yarn stores and the first one we went to was in Portree and um, that was called Isle of Sky Crafts um, at Over the Rainbow. And I hope I can find everything. I hope I might do some printing. Um, so I got a cross stitch kit um, with more Highland cows. Um, I think this is the last Highland cow thing I have. But this is um, a kit. It's designed and um, put together in Scotland. And, um, yeah, I don't think I've ever shown any cross stitch on here, um, but I have done some. <laughs> I don't do it very often, but, um, I was really excited to see. They had shelves and shelves of, uh, custom designs and kits, um, in this, the Isle of Sky Crafts store, so I felt like I had to, had to get one. Um, and then I also got from that store, they had some hand spun yarn, um, ooh. So it's just called Hand Spun by Janet Mitchell, <laughs> and uh, that's the tag. Um, it's in it's a natural fawn color. Um, so I got two skeins of this, and it is um, Shetland wool. So we didn't go to the Shetland Isles, but um, I figured, you know, gotta get something that's semi-local. And. Um, Shetland Isles, Shetland Wool, that's kind of close, <laughs> local, um, enough. And, um, but it was hand spun on the Isle of Skye, so that was something nice to get. Um, so from, from, uh, Portree, we went back down to Broadford, where we were staying the night before, and, um, went to a yarn store there. Um, it was called the Hand Spinners Having Fun. And they had a bunch of yarn as well as um, some fiber and um, hand knit items to sell. 
I'm gonna take a drink of my coffee. <laughs> so from there, I picked up some hand dyed yarn. And this is um, cashmere and it's 50, no, 5% cashmere and um, the rest <laughs> um, wool. It doesn't say what specific wool, it just says lamb's wool for the other um, for the other fiber content. But this is some hand dyed, um, there's about 100 grams and yeah, it's it was really this pretty green um, that I liked and it's really soft too so I definitely like cashmere um, and then I also picked up from them there's gonna be some crinkling Sorry. Um, some oh gosh you know what I remember when I after I bought this um, there wasn't any label to go with it because it was just by by weight and so I think it um, it's a BFL Tussa Silk, no, wait, maybe. It's, <laughs> it's uh, I think it's BFL and some sort of um, silk or uh, the, what's the other one? I think it's silk. I think it was BFL and silk. So um, yeah, that's that. I think, I'm, I think it's also 50-50. But yeah, so I got um, some fiber and also very soft. Um, so that was from uh, Broadford at the Hand Spinners Having Fun. Um, and that was most of the trip in Scotland. Um, we did go to Edinburgh Castle. Um, oh, there was one more on store. I have fiber flying around um, that we went to in Scotland. It was called. Um, Ginger Twist Studio, and I think she is pretty, um, I need to join her Ravelry group too, because she mentioned that, but she had some hand-dyed, um, yarn in her studio. It's this really cute shop, it's really small. I walked in and there was a class going on, and I was like, oh, are you guys open? <laughs> because the class was just finishing up, but the way, where the table was and where all the seats were, there was basically, like, no more walking room in the store so um but they were open and so I browsed around and I asked her if she had any um local yarn and she pointed out all of the hand dye that she had um so I picked up some of uh Ginger's hand dyed chunky baby and this is the card it's got a really cute I can do this. <laughs> it's got a really cute um, cat and cat logo. Um, so hand dyed chunky. Um, she also had tote bags, which I picked up one um, and used it for the rest of the trip. And then I threw it in the wash, and it shrunk. But now it is the perfect knitting bag size. So, <laughs> um, so that worked out. But yeah, so that is what I got from yarn in Scotland um so yeah I'm wondering if I want to split up England for next next time I think I might do that because that way the show won't be so long um so next time I'll show you guys all the stuff I got in England which includes going to um the loop store in London um so yeah that was exciting and um yeah, and then we'll move on to um, Wibbly Wobbly Timey Wimey. So um, I went to the Doctor Who experience in Cardiff, which is the capital of Wales, which I didn't know until like before we went to, on our trip. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, so we went to the Doctor Who experience. Um, it's this exhibit slash um, adventure through uh, about Doctor Who and I don't want to give too many spoilers in case you haven't gone and want to go someday and see what it's like but there is an interactive part to it um, where we weren't allowed to take pictures so it was really fun um, I really enjoyed it and and then um, the rest of it is just uh, props and costumes that they have from filming from the show set so 
Um, that was really fun. And uh, we did do some shopping at the gift store. So the first thing, or one thing I picked up, I got a lot of tote bags. So this is um, from the Doctor Who Experience. It's their, their comic book themed tote bag. It has a doll like on the back. So I got this and I also got um, what I'm wearing, which is this Doctor Who sweater. And it says Time Lord on the back, which I don't know if you'll be able to see, but um, yeah, I'm going to be wearing this to Comic Con for sure. So if it's not too warm, hopefully. So I got that and then I picked up some, some little pins for there's a little TARDIS pin and a little official, there we go, <laughs> official companion pin um, and just a, a Time Lord Doctor Who wrist adjustable wrist ribbon. So yeah, that was a lot of fun. Um, if you ever go to Cardiff and you're a Doctor Who fan, you, you have to go to this. This is, yeah, a must-see. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that was pretty much the Scotland part and the Cardiff part of our trip. Um, I guess next time we'll talk about England, and hopefully I'll have some finished objects by then. Um, but, yeah, that is pretty much all I have. Um, oh, you know what? I might not be able to record normally when I normally would in two weeks, but I might be able to put up another episode um, before I leave for Comic Con. Because, um, oh my gosh, Comic Con's in two weeks, guys. <laughs> uh, um, for those of you that don't know, um, Comic Con is um, the San Diego Comic Convention, and it's this huge. Um, international convention in San Diego and there are comics and movies and TV shows video games um, basically all like pop culture and fandoms um, and it's this four day long event with panels and exhibition hall and that's coming up in two weeks so um, yeah, I don't know where the time go went, so um, that's coming up, um, so I may not be able to record, uh, well, I won't be able to record when I'm in Comic Con or for um, an episode when I'm there. Um, I might be able to get some short um, videos, though, and then maybe splice them together and put them up when I get back, um, but maybe I'll do a second episode um, next weekend. I should, yeah, I'll probably be able to do one J July 4th weekend. So um, that's what I'm thinking. I'll be able to um, record another episode in a week and maybe put it up sometime around then or maybe closer. Um, it'll be probably at the latest on Wednesday. And I'll talk about the rest of the stuff I got from England. Um, maybe I'll have some finished objects by then. Um, and yeah, that's um, pretty much it for this week. That was a lot, um, and uh, yeah, so social media stuff, um, I'm Eliana Nitz on Ravelry, and Unperfect529 on Twitter, um, Instagram, right now my Twitter account is just like picking up from my Instagram, so um, there's nothing too special there, and um, yeah, and then the podcast group is Knits and Stuff Podcast on Ravelry, and show notes are at knitsandstuff.wordpress.com. Um, I think that's it, and um, I hope you guys have a good, or have had a good month or so, a couple of last few weeks, um, and uh, yeah, I guess I will see you in a week and a half, roughly, and then after that, a little more than two weeks <laughs> um and happy crafting happy knitting bye